Shine bright like a diamond. Biggest star in the UFC is Poirier Fight Week. I don't know the rest of the words to this song, and I can't sing. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to episode five, I think, of the Bloodied and Bruised podcast i am taylor joining me once again is my man lemon larry i am coming to you from the beautiful in my opinion indianapolis indiana where the weather is 70 some odd degrees in the daytime which is a massive relief from the heavy heavy heats feels like 114 in texas how you doing uh how you doing christian Oh, doing good, man. Glad to be back. We took a little bit of break. I was getting out of a restaurant put together, but uh, glad to be back on a good schedule. Dude, I'm glad you're here. So, um, I really, really, I know it's it's going to be a uh, shorter one today, but I really, really wanted you here. Um, I know we discussed a little bit on the first episode. My uh, entire dad side of the family, um, or 99.9% of them are uh, from Louisiana and still live in Louisiana, and I'm really close to all of them. So even though uh, I'm not uh, Louisiana by birth, if you will, license and all that stuff would say Texas, but uh, Louisiana is very uh, near and dear to me. And um, obviously, you're Louisiana and Cajun, whichever one you want to go by. Um, and the, uh, one of the, one half of the main event this, uh, Saturday, which is tomorrow is, uh, a Louisiana guy in Dustin Poye. And, um, not only is he my favorite fighter personally, the, the, the ties, if you will, of, uh, the Louisiana bloodline, plus him being from Louisiana, it, it goes deeper. It runs deeper for me. So, I mean, I, I know you've said you love Poye. Like, where's he, where's he, uh, where's he sit at, I guess? would be the question like where's he set up for you uh he's one of my favorite fighters of all time i i, I because i've gotten to meet him a few different times uh i've got his autograph a few times i got to go to like his band meets and stuff it's and he's just genuinely been a good guy and cool and like it's always it's always nice to have somebody that's from your area like and to see them like grace the big state like the world stage like that so I I love that dude. I was so excited for his fight week. Yeah, likewise, likewise. So, um, without further ado, let's uh, let's just do a little little quick peek, real quick. So, currently, the main event for this Saturday, I should say, currently got a little off there, but we'll roll with it, right? Uh, the main event Saturday, Islam Makachev will be defending his. Uh, 155 pound lightweight title against the challenger in Dustin Poirier. Currently, Islam Makachev is a minus 625 favorite. I am so sorry for that. 625, the comeback on Dustin is plus 430. Islam will be 32 years old on fight day. Dustin will be 35. They both weighed in today at 155 pounds. Islam is five foot ten. Allegedly, he looked a lot taller than one inch over Dustin, but that's okay. Dustin is five foot nine. The reach on Islam Makachev is 70.5 inches, and the reach on Dustin is 73 inches. And the over under, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, is 2.5 rounds. The over being plus 150, and the under being minus 195 so they do not th expect this fight to go very late so christian uh what are your initial thoughts what are your initial thoughts on the fight overall and uh 
just tell me what you're thinking, man. Cause I've got a lot of thoughts. I've got a lot of feelings. So hit me. All right. You want to know what my brain thinks or my heart thinks? Cause those are two wildly different things right now. <laughs> Cause my heart thinks he got the, the third title shot coming off that same, uh, St. Denise win and all this, like, could this be all the stars aligning and Fourier, like third time's a charm. Gets, yeah, I mean, he already he went back against Connor. Let's see if he is went back against like Khabib's protege. And it, like, if he if he could come out and do that, I mean, like, what a career! What an amazing <laughs> career! Because everybody thought whenever he got head kicked by Gaethje, like oh, it, like the second after that, everybody's first thought was like, oh, Poirier will never be a champion. That's one of the first things I thought. Like, yeah, I really wanted to see him beat Gaethje and go into an Islam fight. When he got head kicked, I was like, "It's over for him." Like he he's he had his two shots. That's all he'll get. But the stars aligned. Sarukian wasn't ready for the fight to take the fight. Poirier is. That's man. I I really hope he can get it done for for the fan of me. But the other side is he's fighting Islam uh, Islam, and that Islam could very well with a win over Poirier, a win over Sarukian. Who's next? Not it maybe he, he like I can't think maybe Gam Gamrot maybe Fazet Fazib maybe those are the only other names I can think of that he might go up to 170. This this potentially could be the greatest of all time. He's on a trajectory to be one of the greatest of all time. So it's it's so hard for me to say that Islam will will not win. I mean, I will uh, will lose. Like he he's going to win. It feels like in my head. Yeah, yeah, I tend to be uh, on that same uh, plane or train of thought, right? So when the fight got initially announced, right, I thought, man, Dustin's my guy. It's my favorite fighter ever, and. Um, this is just stylistically not a good matchup, right? So to kind of preface before I go too much deeper, right? I have a, what I call a head and a heart game, right? But mine is a little bit backwards, right? So a lot of people say, my head says this, my heart says this, and heart being what they want head is logic right okay. yes and no for me right so sometimes it goes backwards so for instance when i first got into this sport and started really like delving in and studying tape and this that the other the first test of Poye fight that i was like prepped for or actually not even prepped for that i saw live you know wasn't a rerun was uh max holloway too and all the numbers and everything and the, the, the odds and the people and whatever, everybody was like, oh, yeah, Max all day. And Max, I want to say it was a decent size, a minus, let's just say in the minus two, it was minus 245 or somewhere in that ballpark, right? And, um, excuse me, all the tape and footage said yes, right? But here... Yeah, that's where your heart is here. <laughs> um, I was like, dude, this Dustin Poirier guy, something about this just feels off, if you will. And uh, I asked my boy Wes, I was like, hey, dude, like, you know more than me about this sport. Am I crazy? Like, can this dude do it? And he's like, yeah, he, he may be, but Max is Max. And I was like, yeah. So I ended up just saying, all right, Max is going to do this by decision. And then what do we know? Dustin showed that there's a power difference and Dustin is a very, very, very fantastic, uh, boxer. It was, yeah, it's one of my favorite fights, top five, top 10, top 10. And that's being generous. Definitely top five, favorite fights of all time. Then he fought, uh, Habib, everything, uh, head and heart linked up that this is, it's not, it's not going to go right for him. Right. So then, uh, Obviously, he loses. Dan Hooker fight comes. Most of this and this, we're together. A little bit of things on paper, head and heart. We're saying, okay, Dustin. But there was definitely a, 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 a stronger feeling in my chest that it was going to be Dustin. What do you know? is Dustin. Um, and then who you fight after that? Connor. 
he fought Connor twice, and actually the first, or I should say, the second Connor two, um, I actually on on paper, if you will, in my head said it's going to be Connor. Connor is accurate. Connor this. Connor that. Connor this. Connor that, and uh, ended it up not being the case that night. Um, but in my chest, I also thought, man, this could be one of those ones moment. The guy, the guy cannot be denied. And what do you know? He did it. Second go round or third go round with Connor, same thing, and lined up. Then we get to the uh, Charles Oliveira fight. And that was one, dude, everybody was like, dude, it's him. It's him. It's him. It's him. It's Dustin. Like, there's, there shouldn't even be hesitation. In fact, my boy Wes, this is what's funny. I was texting him, and he was saying, I'm telling you, Amanda Nunes is losing tonight, which is wild. <laughs> and he said, Amanda is going to lose tonight. And I said, there is no... No shot I Zero mean, to Juliana Pena. He's like, I'm just telling you it's going to happen. And um, sure, whatever, dude. And I said, the one I'm worried about is Charles versus Dustin. Oh, dude, you shouldn't be worried about that one. I'm like, okay, coming from the dude who's confident in Juliana Pena beating Amanda Nunes. Okay. Um, but I was paranoid. And then, unfortunately, my paranoia was right. So on paper, everything here said Dustin and here said Oliveira. Then we uh, skip ahead. Who was the next fight? Uh, Michael Chandler. Yes. They lined up. It went. Gaethje, everything here was Poye. Mostly here was Poye, right? Poye lost. So not saying that I'm a fortune teller or anything or, or, or a prophet. But everything here says Islam Makachev. There's nothing on paper that makes you think except for, oh, he – has been knocked out or he has been tested on the feet by Alexander Volkanovsky, who has fantastic takedown defense, mind you. Everything points to Islam. There's no universe that we should say, oh yeah, on paper, this is Islam. But for the past like week, I felt it here for some odd, odd reason. And maybe it's the fanboy, maybe it's all the shine like a diamond reels on social media and memes <laughs> and all that. And, and that could be it because it definitely gets you pumped up. Like it makes you think this is, I, I, I posted on Facebook today um, when I met him at the, uh, the Rouse's there in Lake Charles as like one last ride. This is it. I, I hope that if he does lose tomorrow, he he fights somebody else so he can go out on a W. I would love that. But there's a decent chance if he loses tomorrow, this is the last ride. And uh, I think if he wins, he probably, knowing Dustin, he's going to be like, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll defend it one time or try to defend it one time, right? But this is the last ride. He has, he has at the end of the day, I mean, I don't want to say he has nothing to lose because he has a title to lose, but like, I mean, YOLO, right? Like, I hate to use that term, shout out 2012, but YOLO. Like what other, like, why not? Why not? Well, it's and, silly. Uh, Jump the gilly. You know, so I'll tell you something else that's interesting. I had a dream. I have MMA dreams. That's how much this sport sticks in my head. And um, I am, of the two that I can remember, I'm one and one. One was that Costa knocked out Izzy which we can talk about in a minute. And um, the other one was that Dustin was going to rear naked choke Connor in the third fight. Um, obviously, the methods were wrong in both, and the winner was right and won. But I had a dream the other night. Me and a coworker, a couple coworkers that I have here in Indianapolis with me, we were talking about it all. I had a dream that Dustin um, got dropped in the first round. Islam jumped on him, didn't put him away. A bunch of scrambling ensued. And then at the end of the dream is Dustin got the back and won by a rear naked choke, which let's be honest here. The, the, the cha if, if that happens, I would be absolutely befuddled. But here's the thing. When we, when we dive a little deeper, like into the – X's and O's or the whatever you want to call it, right? So like Michael Chandler in all actuality never been subbed, right? He had never mm -hmm. been subbed. 
and I'm not going to put Michael Chandler on the level of Islam as a wrestler. I'm not going to put anybody, say, for Khabib on the, the level of Islam as a MMA wrestler. But he managed to slip, slide, and slim with Michael Chandler and then ended up getting the back and choking him out. Now, granted, Benoit really, really applied the pressure. And uh, it was a very one-way traffic uh, route on the mat. But I think if Dustin does it, if he gets the guillotine, I'm just going to be like, what? So if he hits the guillotine, I mean, my brother messing around last night, we made a bet that if there's a, if he actually hits the guillotine on Islam and it's a fight, we're going to get Matt, we're going to get uh gilly goose gang tattoos. I kind of, uh, I don't have any tattoos, but part of me kind of wants to be a part of that. I'm not gonna lie he, to you. If he hits the guillotine, we had you, you, you got to join the Gilly Goose Gang. I don't know how my wife would feel <laughs> about that, but that would, uh, I mean, like, what better opportunity for some kind of MMA related tattoo, right? Like, yeah, just get it, get a fucking goose jerk and out another one. <laughs> that would be. Damn, now I kind of hope he doesn't win by guillotine just because I feel like I'll be obligated. <laughs> <laughs> but most um, likely, if Dustin's going to win, in my opinion, it's going to be by, by knockout or knockout. TKO. And I definitely – it's not as unlike – it's crazy because this is the biggest uh, underdog he's ever been. And like I said, on paper, it all points to him being the underdog here. I, I – you know – the only time that Islam got finished, he was lunging forward, got hit with a check hook. Could it happen? Yes, but that 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 happened years ago. Islam's much more technical. It's just it's gonna be a, I, did, I love that he won the the Saint Denis fight, but it wasn't in, honestly inspiring for an Islam fight. You know what I mean? It wasn't like oh, all right, he's going. It, it, he won because Saint Denis got sloppy. And not taking anything away from Poirier, he's got knockout power. But I, I, I just see this fight being like you borrowed expression that one way traffic. Yeah, most likely it realistically is. It realistically is, because um, I mean, imagine, and this isn't a disrespect to to Benoit Saint Denis, but like, I mean. Who do you think if, if if Islam was fighting Benoit tomorrow on a full uh, full training camp? This wouldn't he, even be a debate for me. This he would beats, be he beats the brakes off of Benoit Saint Denis. Yes, very much so. First round, he might have a little bit of a hard time just because the dude's big, and and that's even being generous. It gets extended. I don't staff infection, which is interesting because there's a lot of rumors going around. That kind of makes me like he's one of those things. And it's on Lafayette Street. Like, what? How much more poetic? I guess that's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm a true believer in not that we get lucky that there are no coincidences. I truly, truly believe there are no coincidences, and it's there's never a case of sometimes you just get lucky. So, is it fate? Is it divine intervention that this fight is happening on Lafayette Street? Right. And then just everything about it. Like Dustin to me is the greatest fighter to never win undisputed gold. Yes. I know there's other names like Yoel Romero or uh, jo Joseph Benavidez. The list goes on. But I mean, I'm sorry. Dustin's resume and performances and everything else is a tier above what those guys, at least the two that I named. Plus, you got to put in to the table. You got to put in pay per view numbers too when you talk about that because, it, you know, with Connor three was not a title fight, but that was still a massive selling pay per view, and that's not just because Connor Connor is a massive star, but that rivalry meant something. Yeah, and it's because of who was on the other side. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. This 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 card tomorrow is. I would be shocked if it didn't sell, and then. And then backtracking a little bit, here's the other thing that we have to mix into the pot, if you will. I think a lot of people are, 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 are making it a very black and white fight. Islam's the better grappler, duh. Better wrestler, 
the Dustin's a better uh, the better better striker. Everything about Dustin is better on the feet. I 100% am on well, that. But uh, uh, every his boxing is definitely better. But Islam's a fantastic kickboxer. That's exactly where I was getting ready to go. Oh, sorry, my bad, buddy. No, 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 no. You, re- you, you read my mind because it goes both ways. There's people like, well, you know, Dustin this, Islam this. Well, Dustin does has good jujitsu, but it's like, are we not thinking about the fact that 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 Islam's striking is not just serviceable? It's freaking good because it's pretty damn good. He he Vol- he baited Bol- uh, Bol- uh, Bol- sorry Volkanovski into that body kick. He was throwing the, that body kick the whole time and waited for Volkanovski to react one time where he dropped his right hand, and then he threw it. It just it, it was step back kick, threw a couple punches, step back kick, knocked him out. Like he set it up. He's he is his striking has evolved to be where I, me and my brother were talking about it, and he's like you know he's could be with kickboxing. And he really essentially, is. Essentially, essentially, and it's funny. All right, a little bit of, little bit of technical difficulty there on my end, but um, tagging along with that, right? Yeah, Khabib with uh, with with uh, better striking. It's funny. I'm sure you and I've discussed this, but my buddy Wes and I were talking about this fight. It's like, what do you, what do you, what do you rate uh, Dustin's chances? He's, I don't want to say he's low on uh, Islam. He's not as high on Islam as a lot of folks are, and he's very high on Habib. Which I, I, Habib's got the better chin. Never been knocked out, never been dropped. I'm on that. Habib, to me, it's pretty clear a more dominant wrestler. But Islam finishes guys. He's got better grappling. He's got better better jujitsu, right? He's got fantastic wrestling. Like, is it as good as Habib's? Eh, debatable. But even if it's not, it's very much so serviceable. It works. And then the striking, yes. There's it's it's there's not even an argument as to who's the better striker, right? Islam is really good. And like you said at the uh, the beginning, um, if he wins uh, tomorrow, that puts him at three title defenses. No, well, it's been two of those against featherweights. Okay, well, guess what? Who? What? Which? What featherweight? Yeah, you know, what featherweight? Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega, Nah, Alexander freaking Volkanovski, who's arguably the greatest featherweight ever. Arguably. And one of those wins was completely dominant. <laughs> One was, yeah, exactly. Not even a, oh, well, it was short notice. Short notice doesn't affect your chin, brother. Sorry. In my opinion, kicking that dome. Exactly. If, if, if Islam, we've been talking about Dustin a lot because, I mean, I'm very biased. I actually am an Islam fan, but I'm very biased because I love Dustin. But um, if Islam wins tomorrow that puts him at three title defenses which i want to say ties him up with um habib and uh bj penn for most at 155 so one more i I think if he beats poirier and beats sarukian he's the greatest lightweight of all time he surpasses khabib i think his quality of opponents better than khabib i think yeah khabib's uh wins were completely dominant what he only lost one round on one judge's scorecard or two judges scorecards or something. He's his wins were more dominant. I think his loans were more impressive. Yeah, his only um round losses were uh round three against Connor. And I wanna say that was on all three judges scorecards, don't quote me. Mm-hmm. And then on two scorecards, he lost the first uh round against um Justin Gaethje. But regardless, okay. that proves our point even further. Dude never bled. Yep. Ooh, ooh, Gleason, T Bow, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> but, but yes, I think it uh, it solidifies his place. I think uh, I, I guess what I'm getting at is there's a lot of history to be made on either side. Exactly. Now, obviously, there's more history to be made. Like, so where does that put? Like, okay, so if Dustin wins, let's say Dustin wins, and um, 
let's say he doesn't defend the title. He either he uh, vacates or he fights Armin and loses, let's just say, right? So he gets the title and never defends it. Where do we put him on the 155-pound goat list? Because – Well, I would say that the, that puts it, that win would be the greatest feel-good win in UFC championship history, even if you're not from Louisiana or one of us who are a super fanboy or whatever. Like that's, that is a feel-good story. That's a fantastic story, but the it doesn't make him the greatest lightweight of all time. But it makes him, it, it puts him on like the like I would I wouldn't call him the greatest, but I'd call him like the, the pillar of lightweights, like the the journeyman turned champion, the the like the most consistent lightweight. He'd be the most consistent lightweight of all time. I, right, right, and I and and I, I dig on that. I agree with that. Right. And the thing to, I guess, tail off that, right? So I don't believe you and I have ever discussed this, but I do believe I'm one of the people that believes there's a difference between greatest and best, right? So like, like if we're going pound for pound on things, okay. John Jones is arguably the greatest fighter of all time or Anderson Silva or GSP, throw them into the mix and people will be like, Oh, why are you throwing Khabib into that mix? You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, yeah, why? He doesn't have the title defenses and all that. And that's where I try to say, maybe he's not one of the greatest, but he's one of the best. Pound for pound, talent-wise, adversity, all those things. I mean, some people call me crazy. I think Khabib might be. I know you say padded record and whatnot, but... I would say Khabib might be the best fighter of all time, just based around the damage took. And he fought fantastic. Like 155 is a stacked division. And let's not act like, oh, well, if he didn't keep fighting, he wouldn't have kept winning. Probably he would have. I mean, I'm very confident he would have manhandled Charles Oliveira or Michael I, Chandler. I think or, he needed two more wins to solidify his record. Just yeah. that he needed Charles Oliveira and he needed uh, what? just one more. Just... Two more defenses, that argument almost, it's so much harder to have that argument. Yeah, and I and I get both ways. But the point and all that is, is and same thing kind of goes, and I and I talked about this with uh, with my buddy uh, Coco, Joe, uh, a couple weeks ago on here. Um, or actually, I think it might have been the last one I filmed. But either way, um, same thing kind of applies for like people like um, – the GSP versus Kamaru argument or the um, Aldo versus uh, Volkanovsky or Holloway argument. But in those circumstances, it was, it was actually in all circumstances, in my opinion, when we're comparing guys from that era to guys to this era, it was a lot harder, or let me rephrase that, is a lot harder for guys now to get a title shot as compared to those guys. Like think about how quickly GSP, I'm not going to try to say a number, but he got a title shot relatively fast compared to like Kamaro. Kamaro took him like what ten straight victories, eleven straight victories before getting the title shot. Yeah. Habib took ten, ten before getting a title shot or nine, whatever. Regardless, interesting fact we won't delve deep into this. He beat RDA in whatever year he did. RDA became champ before Habib. And then Eddie Alvarez, and then Connor. So interesting fact: beat the champ, and there were three champs um, after that era. It's interesting if you go look it up. It's it's, it's funny to me. Same thing with Aldo. Aldo, go ahead. I was saying, I, I wouldn't have thought it. I, and I know that, but in my head, it doesn't make it, sense. It, exactly, and I know there's injuries and yada yada yada. But but my point is, it's that era fighter had a slightly easier. I'm not even gonna call it slightly. Let's be real. A lot easier. Um, path to the uh, to the title. So with that, I got on a tangent there, as I do many times. If Dustin wins tomorrow, he will be a champ. He will be an undisputed champ. If he loses his next fight, assuming he tries to defend, that's fine. He was a winning champ that never defended. If you look at the lightweight um, history or or what's pan, pantheon i guess could work here right of um every lightweight champion 
I mean, and we compare resumes, this goes back to the best versus greatest. Yes, he may not have more title defenses than BJ Penn or, or Frankie Edgar. Um, Benson Henderson, I think, had some at least one title defense. I'm not sure if Pettis off the top of my head defended. I think he did. Yeah, I think he did. He defended Wait, did he? what in his... I thought he fought, I thought he won in the Fort RDA. Okay, I'm thinking of Benson then. Benson defended against Nate Diaz. Yeah, no, I think uh, I could be wrong, but I, in my head, Pettis won and then lost immediately to RDA. I, okay, yeah, okay. So, but my point, my point being is, even if Dustin wins tomorrow and doesn't defend at all, like I'm not going to put him behind Benson Henderson. Is I don't. It's 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 hard to put him ahead of people that have touched undisputed gold. Right in the in the in the ranks of all time greats of that weight class, but like I don't know, dude. He's up there for regardless of whether he's such gold or not. And to me, he wins tomorrow and loses his next fight or doesn't fight again. I put him like I put him ahead of uh, Frankie Edgar. The only reason <laughs> I have Frankie Edgar ahead of him personally is just because of the fact that Frankie touched undisputed gold. Yeah, fair enough. And I might even be—I I might even be so bold as to put him ahead of BJ Penn. Uh, debatable, debatable, debatable. That one gets a little bit harder. If he wins, to sell me on. If he wins, he's top five. Yeah. Yeah. Habib, Islam, Charles, BJ Penn, Dustin Poirier. Yeah, that's a that's a solid list. And that and that list is arguable without winning a title in my opinion yeah well would That's you put me. without winning a title would you put uh you would no nah, i guess you wouldn't without winning a title you wouldn't put connor above him how what did connor do at 55 connor well, has just, one win just, at 55 i mean winning the championship the uh oh you're right you're right you're right i no, forget I that he was I, primarily a 145er yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, like, I, I mean, one of the greatest performances ever, honestly, against Eddie Alvarez. That is a hundred percent masterpiece, masterclass. Like, if you want to show uh, a, a new person, maybe not like a banger, but like a master performance. To me, that's one of them. And I'm a Connor hater, but that Alvarez fight was just—it's up there with the Cody Garbrandt over Dominic Cruz fight. It really is, in my opinion. Now, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess Dominic Cruz was a lot more. Uh, no, that that uh, performance is awesome, fantastic. The, the, the Garbrandt one. Yeah. Yeah, fall from grace, unfortunately, but that's a story for a different day. Yeah. Um, but we've we've sat here and talked about the the Poye one. I I it's so so let, let let's backtrack. I got this this fight just has my all day today at work. I've been hearing that freaking diamond song and telling yeah. these, <laughs> telling these new guys that I'm working with. I'm like, dude, like <sighs> I know y'all are glad it's Friday because we don't have work tomorrow. I want it to be Saturday. I'm so freaking excited. Me too, um, man. So, gun to your head. How do you think? How do you think tomorrow goes? How do you think? Uh, put yourself in the way I see things. How do you think tomorrow goes here? And how do you think things go tomorrow here? I right. tomorrow the way that my head and heart works. The way your head and heart works. What does logic tell you, and what do you feel happens? Logic basically? tells me. Logic tells me. Poirier comes out heavy first round. First two minutes of the first round, he tries to put it on uh, Islam. He gets some success going, and then he overreaches with one strike. And then Islam gets him down and grinds him for the first round. It, it's going to be like two minutes into the fight. He gets him down, and he stays he stays down for the full three minutes of the first round. Second round, he gets him on the ground even faster. He might finish in the second round or third round doing that same thing, grinding him out, looking for a choke. Gets it back, gets the ground and pound going, softens him up, and finishes Poirier, and everybody is sad. But what my heart says, well, is that that pressure works. Um, Islam makes a mistake, and Poirier's hands are 
clean and crisp. He does see when people do that faint inward like St. Denis was doing. He does have that check left ready. He's Maybe he hits him, and then he goes in, and he finally gets that guillotine. That's what he's going to do. It's going to be the guillotine. I'm going to get the gilly goose tattoo. That's what I, that's, that's what my heart says, is that it, it all the stars align. He's been talking about the jumping gilly the last four fights. He hits it. That's what the, that's what the so, heart wants. So that's what the heart wants. So you're, you're saying, so which, like, if you're officially saying something happens, we're going with his law. Yeah, that's the logic. That's the, the, the what I can see happening is, is, you know, when a striker gets in their, their rhythm and they start to feel a little bit confident and then they take that one step too far and the left leg or dust case, the right leg gets inside of Islam and now he's got the single leg. That's, yeah, that's just how I see it. And I got, you know, I'm going to feel like I'm going to be sitting there pacing around the living room because oh. I can't sit down while I watch it. And when he grabs a hold of the single leg and gets him against the cage. And 12 seconds later, Poirier is on his on the ground. I'm going to be like throwing my hat on the ground. Be like, come on. You know, that's how I feel like my night's going to go. I can already tell you. So up here in Indy, I mean, there's fight fans, but I can already tell you my posture most of that time is no matter what's happening is going to be this. This is my fight posture where I'm concerned, right? That's your stress. Yeah. <laughs> and then when, when a round ends, I do this. If it's a fight I really have investment, especially the Dustin Poirier fight, hands are doing this. Oh, wait, hey, I got a weird twitch. I, I meant to ask you this. What do you think about the Golden Gloves? They're kind of funky looking. They, That's a, it's they another suck. asterisk. Like, we're introducing new gloves. That's something I that hit me today. What does that do? Like, Did let's you be hear, real here. A, a few of the people said that the, that the material is a lot stiffer. It's a lot, like, coarser. Uh, instead of being the leathery, like, you know, smooth, it's more of like a canvas. So they said, uh, even Islam said he thinks that there's going to be much more cuts on this card. Interesting. So that could be something. But, like, they, I, I think my brothers, my brother loves them. But I, I think they look funky. I think they look weird. Yeah. They're, they, they're like, blocky. They're very blocky. But it's, it's the same thing when the new belt got uh, introduced that a lot of people – didn't like i I loved it it. i I loved it it from jump i was like that's way slicker looking oh dude it looks like a professional organization belt where the other one was just kind of i like the other one it's nostalgic but objectively this one's cleaner better just all around improvement and maybe maybe i'll feel like that or the fighters will feel like that you know with the new gloves because it's supposed to keep they got that interlocking thing in the in the wrist supposed to keep them from grabbing gloves which i think i think grabbing gloves is worse than grabbing the cage yeah, you can't oh, pull 100%. your percent. Watch Dude, Connor that. versus Dustin two and three, namely three. Yeah, and for yeah, sure. hell, if we're talking about it, Connor versus Habib. Yeah. I'm, yeah, no, it's horrible. Yeah, I would hundred percent agree because that yeah, very much yeah, so. That's, that's that's gonna prevent that one and then they're supposed to like keep your fingers in. I mean, because the two biggest things in our sport right now is the uh, – one of the biggest things is the eye pokes. They're just becoming more and more and more. Like there's at least – it feels like one a cart where it's like a really bad eye poke. Yeah, and that's um, – that's what I mean. If it's curving the fingers, that's it's not just the cut aspect of the new gloves, but like – how does that affect grappling? How does it? Affect, I actually am concerned, or not concerned, curious, more so as to how it affects the grappling side of things as opposed to the striking. Because striking, if it curves your fingers in a little bit more, what what difference does it make? You're making a fist. Okay, cool. It helps me, right? Whatever. But if it's going to keep your fingers a little bit more curved, and you know how much more, whatever. Sure. It may not have any effect on it. We don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. There's that is that's a wild card that I I watch a lot of podcasts and stuff. That's a wild card I haven't heard anybody brought uh, bring up, and it could be nothing. Maybe it's just be me like grasping for straws of a reasons to overthink things. But we don't know. Like you said, it could cause more cuts. We could have doctor stoppages from punches that normally wouldn't slice and dice. That do slice and dice. You don't know. Maybe Dustin catches Islam with something that normally would have an impact, 
but not a game changing impact. And then come tomorrow night, all of a sudden that one strike does something more than we would expect. I don't know. I think it's a bigger talking point than, and watch, I could look stupid. The fights all pan out like they normally would. We'll see, <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's what's that, that's what makes this sport so fun and what makes this little, uh, twist, um, so fun. Boy, we got way off, um, due to myself mostly, but I guess to, to circle back, you, you said that your, your head a hundred percent is just like, yeah, it's, it's history is going to repeat itself, unfortunately. And most likely if you were to like, say you got to choose what most likely happens on paper, it's Islam. And I'm going to say rear naked choke late second, early third round. He's so damn good. I'm going to roll second. So good. I'm going to roll second. But then I get that weird, weird gut feeling. I'm going to stick with the Islam pick. But I get that weird feeling that, like like I said, cannot be denied, will not be denied. This is destiny. This isn't luck. There are no coincidences. Dustin Poirier and new. I'm not going to commit to it because maybe there's a little bias there. But at the same time, I'm not uh, – it's crazy for me to even say this. I'm not going to be shocked. I know that's like a thing I say a lot. Nothing surprises me. Things do surprise me. That one, I really won't be. I don't know why. It's weird. It's a weird one. But anyway, we are 42 minutes in. This wasn't going to be a uh, a long one. I just want to jump into the next fight, just kind of give it a little – a little breeze over and uh, just kind of give it a quick look and then give a couple quick picks for the main card, which we saw earlier. There's been, according to topology, a change. But uh, yeah, the co main event Sean Strickland versus Paulo, the eraser, Acosta. Sean Strickland is 33 years old. Paulo Acosta is also 33 years old. They are both six foot one. Sean Strickland has a 76 inch reach. Paulo Acosta has a 72 inch reach. Uh, Sean Strickland is a minus 260. Paulo Costa is plus 205. Sean Strickland currently sits at 28 wins with six losses, whereas Paulo Costa sits at 14 wins and three losses. And the over under on this one, shocker for a Sean Strickland fight, wink, wink, 4.5 rounds. The over is minus 105. The under is minus 125, according to DraftKings. So basically, even money close what do you think because I, I don't have a super hot take on this one i i, I tried to but i don't uh sean's too technical for costa to catch him with something silly i think i think it's a i think it is a going to be a stereotypical typical sean strickland fight i don't see anything that costa can i mean not anything but of course it's a fight and it's something happened but uh, Sean, I rate his defense super highly. His, his striking is extremely good. And, I mean, it's – like we've talked about before, his uh, his Philly shell is second to none. And you know, I, I think that this is a five-round fight. And Costa – Costa's going to get dragged into the fourth and fifth round and maybe finish I, – I don't know if he's going to get finished or it would just – it's just going to be a 49, <laughs> you know, like – Four rounds to one victory for Sean. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I tend to uh, I tend to agree with that uh, with that sentiment, man. Um, I tried to uh, tried to find reasons to love Costa here. Um, the biggest deterrent for that would be the fact that it is five rounds as opposed to three. If it was three rounds, I'm still going to take Strickland, but. You can see a world, right? You see I that he gets he gets to the first two rounds, and then Sean Strickland doesn't put him away in the third. But I don't see a, a world where Costa beats him four rounds. That you know gets three clear rounds on him. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's the thing that's 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 kind of funny, right? So like when the uh, Strickland Izzy fight happened, that was such a 
underdog, a massive underdog, massive favorite. And people acted very shocked, right? I mean, myself included. But hindsight being 2020, if you go back and watch the tape, in my opinion, that fight is a, the result of that fight is a lot less surprising. I think the tape, the tape showed, yes, Izzy should win, right? Theoretically. So maybe I should say the tape and the stats. People don't land clean on Sean Strickland. Izzy didn't lean, land clean on Sean Strickland. He won the second round. Now, I went and rewatched that fight the other day. It wasn't a blowout in the sense of, oh, my God, Strickland just beat his ass. But Strickland clearly won. So you yeah. go back and watch that fight, right? Hindsight being twenty twenty, if we had removed the bias goggles i think that result actually as crazy as it sounds is a little bit more predictable than most of us or all of us um saw it being but and that being said izzy throws a lot of hooks sean strickland love or let me rephrase that paulo costa likes to throw hooks the 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 costa paths to victory for me is if he lands a head kick, his lead, both head kicks, lead and uh, just his right, regular, whatever you want to call it, like lead roundhouse, roundhouse, right? His head kicks are really, really nice. His lead head kick is it's beautiful. And his body kicks are freaking nasty. Ask Marvin Vittori. His leg kicks are good, but leg kicks don't really work against Sean Strickland. You go back and watch the... Um, the uh, Drake's Duplessis fight. Drake has had a little luck with the uh, with the leg kicks, but still, the way the way that Paulo Costa beat Sean Strickland is either a he catches him with a uh, big shot that puts him away. Costa throws a nice, nice, nice wheel kick, and Strickland has been caught by Elizu Zaleski dos Santos um, wheel kick. So that's not out of the question. And then the other thing that Costa does, which is I kind of uh, hinted at it earlier, I thought it was something he would do to give Izzy problems, is his body shots. Um, and Sean Strickland is definitely there. His Philly shell is good and responsive defensively, but he's there to definitely be hit by body shots. So I could possibly see an early, just really, really clean body shot. They've happened before. Um, so it's not out of the equation that he could do it. Um, but this one, I, I, I tend to agree. I could see cost of putting him on the back foot, giving him a really, really, really hard fought first round. Actually, I'm going to be as bold as to be confident when I say 49, 46. First yep, round, to Paulo doing. Costa, maybe even second round. Let's just say either one or the other. I, I don't think he wins both. For some reason, I think it's he wins one or the other and then loses the other four. I don't think Strickland finishes him. I guess it's always a possibility, but but Costa's shown that he can go five with Marvin Vittori, who's not a power puncher, but Strickland really isn't either. Yeah, but Marvin Vittori is not a volume guy the way Strickland is either. You know, that's, that's, that's a different fighting fighting Sean Strickland for five rounds. is not fighting Martin Vittori for five rounds. That's, and, and, I, Sean true. Strickland is going to get much better as the fight goes on. He's going now, to figure out his range. Now, something else I want to I, I want to point out before we just kind of do the little glance over these other ones, right? Um, this seems to be a, a talking point some people have not really touched on is the cost of takedowns. Costa's been taking guys down more than you would expect, right? He took Marvin Vittori down, and he took down uh, Paulo uh, or Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold. Now, Sean Strickland's got really good takedown defense, but what happened? Like this one does have asterisks. Like, what happens if Paulo Costa just decides, okay, tonight's the night I'm gonna gonna become a D1 wrestler? How much does he do it? But the backside of that is, if he does it, how tired does he get? You know, I, I mean, I, I I stand by my uh, my four rounds of one forty nine forty six Strickland, but there are some wrinkles in this one that definitely make me interested. 
And I actually think this one or the the the, the fight prior is your fight of the night. Which is Kevin Holland versus uh, Mikhail Oleg Jachuk. I think I said that right. Lord Mikhail Oleg Jachuk. You're muted. Sorry, hey, but... You're good. What were you saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Kevin Holland, I think... Uh... I, I, I want to say Trailblazer is just going to dominate this fight. Um, but uh, I don't know. He, he did not look good against my, uh, Venom Page, but that's because Venom Page doesn't fight you. You fight him, and this is not going to be the same thing for this fight. Um, he, Holland's super good when he can. Like, I, I think Holland's really showed his skills against him. Was it the Julian Rosa fight in the... Uh, not, not Julian Rose, I'm sorry. Uh, Tim Means fight and uh, and the uh, Hakeem Buckley fight. Like, those are two fights that I really like. And when he can have somebody that's coming forward, he's great. And if it's somebody that's going to engage in his game, fantastic. Wonder Boy fight, even though he lost that fight, that was a fun fight. Venom Page made him look a little silly. We're not, we're not going to lie here. But uh, I, I think this is a good – he said uh, – Something funny. He's like, um, I asked for a tin can and they gave me one. So let's see if he can come out there and beat up, beat him up. So this one, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna dive super deep, but I actually don't know where to lean on this one. As crazy as that sounds, I was I was sitting in the airport doing a little tape study on this one. Right, Mikhail Olaj J Olaj J. These Polish last names. Olaj Jachuk, Lord Mikhail. Right. He can be knocked out, right? He can be subbed. But he's also went the distance with some bangers in Khalil Roundtree. And I think he went the, yeah, he went the distance with uh, Justin, uh, Dustin Jacoby at 205, up a weight class. This is at 185, too, mind you. So Holland is going back, which he was knocking. He knocked, uh, um, you named him a second ago, Joaquin Buckley at um, 85. Yeah, but, uh, but Buckley's a 170 year you know? Right, right. Yeah, but, yes. So he did knock out Sosa from his back. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. I'm just curious because the thing that a lot of people are talking about or don't seem to be talking about is Mikhail Olajacek has been trying to take guys down. Now, has it panned out for him that, that great? Not really. But um, I, I think I would, this is one of the ones that I do – I did a little bit. I was able to look out a little bit. I do think he uh, that old Jacek will uh, is is not as bad as people are giving him. What's what are what's the line on this one? Can you look it up real quick? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, but I I don't think he's. It should be. It's, a, uh, it's wide. It's like minus two forty five. Yeah. Okay. See, I thought I saw that. It that it shouldn't be that wide, but I really do. Minus two ninety plus two thirty five. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it shouldn't be that far. It shouldn't nope. be that far. It's uh, if you're a bad man, it wouldn't be bad to for him like twenty five bucks on that line, but uh, that's that's uh, it should be that wide. But I I do think Trailblazer Blazer gets it done, and besides the fact that he's starting to want to win fights, like entertaining people is one thing, and that's you know with the obviously the Wonder Boy come, fight comes to mind. He had Wonder Boy on the ground like three or four times and let him back up. I don't think he was trying to entertain anybody with the the uh, MVP fight. I think MVP just had his number, but I I do see a world where Holland comes out and gets the gets the wrestling going because his jujitsu is no joke. His striking is what he's known for and stuff, but his jujitsu is still is is underrated. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing too is I'm curious like if uh, I'm just gonna call him McHall Lord because that Ola J chick is a tongue twister for me today. That dude, I mean, it, what's crazy, you know, it's really interesting is he multiple times was that no, 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 let me rephrase that. He did try actually to take down Kyle Bahio, and Kyle struggled to take him down. Interesting. Like, I think he missed him three or four or shots, single legs, give or take, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I definitely think it's like you said, it's, it, it's, it's not as 
is as wide of a fight as the line indicates. Holland probably wins. I'm just curious to see what happens if this dude tries to wrestle and doesn't get tired. He he spams. He he has really good body shots, but he spams the freaking like lead like overhand or not lead overhand left because he's a southie. Um, he loves that overhand left. He throws that thing like. It's going out of style. Like he's got to throw as many as he can. Um, he has some crack in it. He broke uh, Chidi and Jaquani. Um, Chidi and Jaquani actually hurt him really, really bad shortly before that fight. It, it hit a head kick with him uh, on him. And it, I'm not going to say a chicken legged him, but he wasn't 100% there. Um, it's a lot more interesting of a fight stylistically and result wise than I think people are giving it. Uh, credit for so quick picks real quick on uh, i'm going to name three more real 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 fast um and then i won't keep you any longer um we saw that um, there's been a main card switch up on topology maybe that's accurate maybe it's not we got to uh they're, they're allegedly switching out um uh Jail Ten Almeida versus uh, Alexander Romanov versus, for uh, Nico Price versus Alex Verona. So assuming that they do that, what's the route that you take? It, it, it just very quick pick. Um, Verona versus Marano. Nico Price. Yeah, likewise. Marano. Likewise, by decision. I think yeah. Uh, Nico Price. I. Uh, I mean, I'm. I wouldn't be like, like blown away if he wins. I'm shocked, but I. Alex Moreno, very unassuming, great fighter. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I think Nico is definitely, unfortunately, on his, uh, on his way out. I like that guy. That that but, Robbie Lawler fight was the knockout was uh, semi alarming too. Suspect it at, at that's being like that. That is the one of the only fights in UFC history where I've looked at it. And went, yeah, I've heard some people say that, but that's uh, I and I, yeah. I don't I'm ha, I'm half memeing with that. I'm like seventy five percent memeing with that, but still that it went like it it like I mean the the uppercut clearly could have caught him on the chin. It, it could have when he was in, but if if that's all it's taking, but I'm not saying Robbie. I mean, still Robbie Lawler he hits hard as hell. I'm I'm just power's just the last kinda, thing to go, and power's the last thing to go. But that's if that's what's taking him to knock him out, then. uh Morono's going to put together combinations. He's got a chin on him himself. He's going to be able to take a shot to give a shot. I, I just don't see uh, Moreno losing to uh, Nico Price at this time. Yeah, likewise. So then the uh, the first fight of the main card currently, now assuming that that is a accurate switch up, is uh, Randy Brown versus Elizu Zaleski Dos Santos. I didn't do any tape study on this one. Obviously, I know who both of these guys are. I couldn't tell you the odds off the top of my head. Um, didn't really prep for that one, but you got a, a quick lean on it. I'm just going to say Randy Brown because Randy Brown has been looking good, but I also, at the same time, definitely don't trust the dude. I, I like Randy Brown's walkout song, so I'm going with him. Yeah, I just don't, I can't, <laughs> I can't trust him. And then the one that they're allegedly swapping uh, uh, Price and Morono out for. Is oh, Yeltsin Jal- Almeida and Alexander Romanov? I, I guess I lean Almeida. Yeah, uh, I do too. I think. But it, he, he struggled with. I mean, he dominated Blades and then got caught. But Romanov is good on the ground as well. I don't see it being the first round finish like his other fights, but uh, let, let's call it a. I, I think this one. I don't know what the over is, but I think it, this one, I think this could be like a grind it out over two and a half. Yeah, I need to look. I was starting to watch the uh, the, the weigh in stuff, both the actuals and the ceremonials, right before we hopped on here. Uh, when we get off here, I'm going to look and just see how they look. Uh, they look not, not only next to each other, but what kind of shape Romanov is in. Because the dude is obviously very, very soft, like I'm wanting to talk, but. It was very soft and he came in. I don't remember which fight it was, but he came in. Oh, was it Chase Sherman? He came in looking just in fantastic shape. Chase Sherman, no disrespect, Chase Sherman, Chase Sherman. And then he got super soft again. And then he had the uh, the Volkov fight where he – what? 
<laughs> you know? And then Marcin Taibura, no disrespect to that guy, he won the first... I'm trying to remember, was it a decision? Just majority decision, regardless. That one, I, I had wondered if it was going to play out closer than it actually did, or, or than people thought it would, and it did. And um, Jailton with the limited... What's the word I'm looking for? A term I'm looking for? Um, sample size that we have in the UFC. I feel like Jelton's better on the feet. Yes, he's a 205er, realistically, that is fighting at 55 because he couldn't find fights at 205. Can't blame people for not wanting to fight him. And Curtis Blades is on a much different level than Alexander Romanov. If Alexander Romanov ever fights Curtis Blades, unless Curtis Blades is just completely washed. I'd be shocked. I'm I, I'm I'm Jailton all day. I know there's a lot of hesitation, and I think people are holding his last performance against him, and the fact that Romanov's a big dude. I think this one's I think this one's um, um, I'll made all day. Which actually leads me to one thing I want to talk about real quick um, before we hop off. I know we have been texting and trying to to get together, and it didn't pan out. Did you look at the London uh, main card? I can confidently say i have not looked at anything except for a few uh 302 videos i i haven't even been on my phone in the last two weeks so i, I get, get to, off work I and get, i go to sleep i get to tell you a couple fights that they've announced i am so excited <laughs> two they announced this week i just just want to get quick reacts okay right. two that they announced this week okay and it is i think the, i'm not even gonna guess what card it was i've been busy too Embarrassment matchups, in my opinion. Okay. Tony Ferguson at 170 against Michael Chiesa. Um, yeah. Retirement yeah. home fight. Okay. That one is the least embarrassing of the two that were announced this week. Are you ready for the next one? Nick Diaz versus Vicente Luque. Oh, Diaz is coming back. I love that. I am a huge Diaz fan. Like no. a huge Luke Diaz a's, fan. Luke A's not been looking good, but no. I mean, no. why? I don't why? know. I don't no, want to I see hope the it, guy lose. I hope Diaz comes back and wins so much. I love the edits. I love the Nick Diaz edits. I just, it's not, I just, I, I don't like it. But whatever. Who am I? To I say? will take. Look, I, I want him. There, was, I saw a video of him working out like a month ago and like actually not looking sloppy and stuff, and. If he comes in and looks good, that's going to make my life – I'd be so happy. I mean, hey, that's fine. But if the the Diaz that fought uh, Robbie Lawler shows up – I don't want to see I, that. Yeah. And I, not that Luke Hayes has been looking super, super fresh, but – okay, he, so he doesn't look terrible. No, no. He's fighting – Was that's, he one and one in his last two? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, he had a good win. And, yeah, that, and, that, and that, I guess the thing with that is he's fighting guys that are not old. So you really have not seen UFC London's main card. No, I prom I swear on whatever you want me to swear on. I literally, if it's got if news is broken the last three weeks, I haven't seen it. My dude, oh, UFC three or four, bro, headlined. Leon Edwards. Versus Bilal Muhammad. What's his name? Bilal Muhammad. I can't ever remember <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I mean, Bilal. He just, deserves Bilal, it. He deserves Bilal's it. Bilal's good. I, I, there, if, if it wasn't him, then the sport's a joke. Yeah, he should he should have had it a while but back. He's got, he's got a, as long of a fight streak as the record for the lightweight win streak. You know, like, isn't he on, he's got a 12-fight win streak right now? Or they're going, no, if he wins, it's going to be on 13, right? I don't think he'll be on 13. I think he's on 10 or 11. He'll be on 12. Okay. I don't think he's a, But anyway, his his uh, win streak is impressive. If that doesn't get you a title streak, then what does? Which rewinding, by the way, Islam, if he wins uh, tomorrow, he goes to 14. He's the, and that's the record. A big club. No, it's not the record, actually. A wins in a row? In my way? Oh, in lightweight? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Far and away in light. Well, well no, no. Habib was 13. So, yes, yeah, he beats Habib. But, I mean, like, the weight, I think the, the I call it the 13 club. Habib, G, uh, GSP, or no, GSP, did GSP at 13? I don't remember. And then Mighty Mouse and uh, uh, Holloway. 
And then oh, nice. beyond that, um, um, Usman with 15, and then uh, G, uh, uh, Anderson with 16. Or just 16 and 17. It's 15, 16, whatever, regardless. Um, but no, so co-main event is the true, let's be real here, the true undisputed heavyweight title, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. It's Tom I, Aspinall. I just... I mean, Tom Aspinall is the – I don't understand. Uh, the one thing I did see on this is um, that John Jones was talking about why he would never fight Tom and does nothing for his legacy and Stipe is the better fight and blah, blah, blah. Like, that makes no Running, bro. sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> hey, what is the – somebody's going to have to explain to me what the point of an interim belt is because it doesn't mean what it's I think number it means. one contender is what it should be. That, an and interim hold. So if so, how how can Aljamain Sterling be be threatened to be stripped if he doesn't fight again in four months? But John Jones can take a year and about eighteen months off in between fights, but keep reclaim his belt. And they're going to defend the interim belt. You should never defend an interim belt. There's only, it, it's only happened one other time that I'm you, aware of, and it was you at should, heavyweight. All right, if John Jones wants to say. I am going for my legacy. I relinquished the heavyweight belt, and I am going to be fighting Stipe Miocic. I go, awesome. Fantastic. That's a great fight. Exactly where I stand. And if he says, I'm going to fight, I'm going to defend this heavyweight belt, I say, uh, Tom Aspinall is going to be a hard fight for you, man. Yeah, I, mean, I think I- it's only been, in terms, only been defended one time, and I want to say it was heavyweight. Oh, it, and it was our love ski or the dude. God, it's an old heavyweight. Um, I keep wanting to say Shane Carwin. What Shane Carwin? The dude, the dude that um, Frank Mir broke his arm. Tim Sylvia. There you go. It was either Tim Sylvia or um, or um, Orlovsky that got a uh, that, that defended interim. Nobody else has that. I, I know that off the top of my head. Orlovsky had an uh, undisputed. He did, but he defended an interim. He had the okay. interim title. At one. I'm, I'm next to positive it was him. You can uh, uh, fact check me. We can talk about that when the card just, actually happens. I just but knew yes. that he had one at one point. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I think he actually – I can't remember if he's a two-time holder, but whatever. Isn't that crazy that he's still fighting? I mean, he's yeah. not even on this card or anything, but the fact that Arlovsky's still on the roster is so fucking crazy. And, 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 and actually beating guys. Yeah. Um, so the other the other main card fights, and I feel like I'm forgetting one. I have two others. I named you two, so I'm not going to name them in order. God, there's one I'm missing. So wanna, Manel, oh. Manel Kapp versus uh, Muhammad Makayev. Manel Kapp versus Muhammad. Uh, that oh Muhammad Makayev. I he I like always Muhammad. ends up. Yeah, he always ends up barely winning. winning. He always ends up winning. Barely winning, yeah. Um, oh, God, who's the other one? Any other day, why am I drawing a blank? Because that's three. There's always five on a main card. But the one, you called it. You predicted it. You really haven't seen this. I feel like you're messing with me right now. No, I, I, I can tell you anything about that's going on with my Waffle House, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the main card, as of... Um, as of... Uh, you know, right now, the main card opener, and then I'm going to have to cheat and look at the other one. Are you ready? Yeah. Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblett. No, they got announced? Yeah. Holy shit, that's going to be a great fight. That's <laughs> going to be a great fight. That's going to be a legit win for Patty. I don't if think he Patty wins. beats him. No, I mean, he like per- he, if, if he wins, if he wins. It's, it, it's a legit win. Bobby Green beat the brakes off of... Uh, of Jim Miller, and that was a fantastic fight. Actually, I, I, I really thought that there was an argument that that could have been fight of the night. If Hollywood and KG don't exist, oh, 100%. that could have been. But, uh, bro, that's an awesome fight. That is exciting. I really want to see uh, I want to see that fight, man. So UFC 304, the one that I was forgetting is at 145 pounds. Arnold Allen, this one I like. Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikadze. Arnold Allen's going to – I think yeah. Arnold Allen's, Allen's going to win. Yeah, for sure. I, I think so, of him yeah. as the uh, uh, I think he's like a, 
a Corey Sandhagen type at 145. I like Arnold Allen. Yeah, I do too. So anyway, well, I'm glad this went longer than I expected it to, but I'm glad we did it, man. Uh, I'm excited for tomorrow. We'll try to do a recap next week. I'm going to be in Indianapolis another week. Thanks for coming on. Enjoy your Friday. I'm going to enjoy mine. I'm about to go hang with some coworkers. Diamond gang, let's do it. Check us out on Spotify. Like, Kill subscribe. Pass it on. I will talk to my wife about that tattoo. And until 